So you recorded a multi-track recording in the Rodecaster Pro onto a micro SD card. What do you do with those files once you get them off the SD card and onto your hard drive? It's kind of a weird process. Rode has actually made the process a lot easier with firmware updates. I'm on firmware version 2.1.2, which is a beta firmware. And I believe that these updates are have been applied to this beta firmware. So if you don't want to use beta firmware, I totally understand. But in this video, I'm going to show you what to do with the poly wave files that are recorded when you utilize the multi-track record function in the Rodecaster Pro, both utilizing the Rodecaster Pro companion app, which in my opinion is the easy way, and also if you just want to use your DAW, in this case, Adobe Audition. You can also unpack the poly wave file in Adobe Audition, but in my opinion, that's the much more confusing and difficult way to do it. So it's kind of a, a beast of a process, but I'm gonna hopefully show it to you in a way that makes sense. By the end of this video, you'll be able to decide whether you wanna use the new firmware to do it with the app or whether you just wanna do it right in Adobe Audition. And you'll understand kind of the pros and cons of doing it both ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump on over into my computer, right on in there. So once you pull the SD card out of your Rodecaster Pro, and put it into your card reader. It should be labeled Roadcaster as long as you formatted it in the Roadcaster and then the Road file and then podcasts. You actually get, depending on how long your podcast is, more than one file. Apparently there's a limit to how big a WAV file can be and it's about three and a half gigs. So for the podcast that I recorded, I've got four different WAV files and these are labeled WAV, but they're actually poly WAV files, which just means all of the different channels are recorded as metadata and just kind of compressed into this WAV file. We have to break them back out into the, in the discrete channels in order to edit them as a multi-track session. Jumping into the app real quick, something else that they've added with the firmware is the ability to bypass that recording limit of WAV files. If you wanna record your entire multi-track session or your entire podcast, regardless of whether you do it as a stereo or multi-track, into one file, as opposed to having it being broken up into multiple files, you can do that now. If you come down to advanced and then click this save 64-bit podcasts, and Rode says this will save the podcast, regardless of how big it is, into one file. And they also say that it works fine with whatever DAW you're using. I haven't tested it, so you just have to take Rode's word for it. I just figured I would show it to you. So first we're gonna do it the old fashioned way and take these poly wave files right into Adobe Audition and break them out in Adobe Audition. So I've already copied these over onto my hard drive and you can see I've got the same four wave files. I just group them by type. And then here we are in Adobe Audition. We can go over to the multi-track. Uh, we can start a new multi-track session and just name it whatever, save it where you want to. We'll just double click in here and pull in these four polyway files. And again, you can see we don't have all the discrete channels. If we drag this out and just kind of see some of this data in here, you can see that these contain 14 different channels, which is what we need to break out. And again, if you were just to drag these over, you just get the one file. So what you can do is just right click on them or you can highlight all of them and right click and do them all at the same time. I wouldn't recommend doing that until you've done this a few times. So we're just gonna do it one at a time. So right click on one and then come down to extract channels to mono files. And it's gonna jump back over into the waveform editor and you can see that it is extracting them channel by channel, giving them a name one through 14. Cause remember it showed us that there were 14 channels embedded within that poly wave. So now we have them all broken out into individual channels. However, they're not labeled in any way except by number. So you can click on them, double click on them and it will show you the waveform. So we know that one and two is something, three and four, well, four is something, five is nothing, nothing. So you just have to go through and click on them and listen to them to figure out what they are, you know, depending on how many channels you recorded into the Rodecaster, you just have to identify them this way. So we know that, well, I don't know, cause I'm not listening to them right now, but say that I did identify them. Um, then you can just pull the ones that you want to edit right into your multi-track session. So we could pull in number one, and I think it was number 
four was another one. Nope, that was wrong. Maybe five. Nope, maybe three. <laughs> Take note of which ones you want. Shit. Maybe seven. There we go. There's something. Anyway, take notes of the ones that you want to actually edit, and then you could pull them over into your multi-track session. And, you know, you can label them here. Uh, if you just click on this track name, then you could label it, say, your microphone, your co-host microphone, whatever the case is. So you can see that's the process, basically, for unpacking the Polywave file in Adobe Audition. It definitely works, but you can see how it can get a little bit cumbersome because that was only one of the files of the four that we need to do. You can see how you're just going to have this huge list of sequentially numbered files that you're going to have to identify and then pull over into your multi-track session. And yeah, it's a process. Now to do it in the companion app, pull up the app, come over to podcasts and whatever podcasts you have transferred over are going to show up here. I only have one, so that makes it simple. If you right click on it, you get another dialog box where you can name it something, you can give it a color. You have these options for saving it with various presets. So these are just presets. Thank you for a viewer for telling me this. But if you host your podcast on any of these hosting sites, it's just going to apply these presets to it. Or you can just do custom and go to advanced settings and then apply these different settings how you want. Then we hit export and it's going to ask us where that wants, where we want to save the file to. So pick where you want it to be saved. I'm going to cancel this because I've already done this part. Now we're going to open up the location that we saved it to, and I'm going to group these by type again. So this is what we get after we export that. We get all of the discrete channels back that we recorded in the Roadcaster, but the benefit of doing it this way is that they're labeled for one. So we know we've got Bluetooth, mics one through four, our sound pads. It gives us a stereo mix if we just want to forego all this multi-track business altogether because it's a pain in the ass. Uh, you can just use the stereo mix and then you've got TRS and USB. Also, it combines Bluetooth sounds, uh, TRS and USB into a stereo file, but it leaves the mics, the XLR inputs as mono files. The other thing it does is it took all four of those polyway files and combine them here. Whereas in Adobe Audition, we had to break them all out separately and then figure out which was which, and then we would have to line them all up, those four different polyway files, all into one sequence. Here it's combined all four of them and broken them all out in their discrete tracks. So much simpler, in my opinion. So now if we just come back over into Adobe Audition, and we can import those files. Um, we wouldn't even have to do them all. I know that I, my guest was, my co-host was on USB and I was on mic two. So those are the only two that I really need to import. But I'll just show you anyway, what happens here. I'll come back over to the multi-track and we can drag in mic two and drag in USB. takes a minute. So that's pretty much it. Once you set your parameters for exporting the files from the app, and then it just unpacks them for you, labels them, combines all the discrete tracks, and then you can just drag the ones into Adobe Audition that you want to actually edit. And in my opinion, just it's way simpler to do it this way. And you can see that we have the full hour and a half plus show all in one file, as opposed to having to unpack all of the polywave files in Adobe Audition and then piece them together in order. It's just a lot simpler. <laughs> well, oh, anyway, I hope that made sense. Hopefully Rode will be able to finalize that firmware into something that's um, into the full version sooner rather than later. So if you're not comfortable using the beta version, then you don't have to wait too long in order to utilize this functionality. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions about how to do things, or if I left anything out, please leave those in the comments as well. And otherwise, I'll just see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.